After the skins are dried, they are now shaped into any kind of material a customer would like, whether it is a fish bag, chair, wallet, sport shoes and the likes. The waste left such as the scales and eyes are also utilized in making fish bones and beautiful jewelry such as this necklace, belts and earrings. Newton's products are in high demand in the export market due to their uniqueness and their gold green approach. He has clients in all seven regions of the world and recently China. We have two ways of approaching the market. One way is actually by exporting or selling the fish leather directly. The other way is by doing what we call value addition to our fish leather. By saying so means making shoes and other things. But now, me as a person, I don't know how to make shoes. I came to Kisumu and realized that we have so many people who are doing shoe repairs. Now from here, I thought now there is an idea. I approached Kenya Leather Development Council through the UN environment. They did help us to train our shoemakers here to the level that as we speak, these people are highly qualified to do an export standard shoe. And that is how I arrived at the point of exporting the fish leather products like shoes. We also have the fundis here who are very good in making the, the jackets. Now they did not have that opportunity because getting leather around here was a big issue. Remember there is no any other tannery in western Kenya. This is actually the first tannery in western Kenya. The next one is actually in Nakuru. So getting leather was an issue. Now when I, we started this they also realized their potential and now they are doing very nice fish leather jackets very nice fish leather shoes, very nice. But the other thing is that, you know, they could not just do it like that. I had to bring them and form an association. That's how we came up with what we call the Kisumu Leather Dealers Association, which up to now is really functioning very well and has employed a number of youths as sales girls and salesmen and also as fundis. The rest of the leather we identified the market outside through the Ministry of Industrialization, through the Export Promotion Council, and through the, the, the Tourism Department, Kisumu County. They are all supporting me in this. Through the Ministry of Agriculture, the Leather Department, all these people, and MUSEA, Micro and Small Enterprise Authority. All these institutions are very much supportive. They are helping me so much in market identification and also ensuring that I don't face any hurdle in my business. I moved into the foreign market for the first time through the Export Promotion Council. They assisted me to identify a client in Florida who actually admired my products and all of a sudden the business began. We took samples, the guy admired, then after that, you know, we were now sending more and more after that, through the Ministry of Industrialization, more and more clients now kept on coming. And, you know, the ministry was also so much supportive in, in terms of uh, developing uh, their, 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 their website using our products and selling outside. And that's how we landed into the foreign market. Local market, the uptake is very slowly. And for the reason that most of us were so much used to, to second-hand clothes, second-hand shoes, which are uh, uh, very much affordable. But uh, with the realization that there is a need to create job opportunities for our youths, they felt like now there is a need to buy our local, locally produced products. And that is actually the way to go. Export standards in the global leather industry are dictated by a country or a union. Unfortunately, Kenya does not have export standards when it comes to leather. Newton therefore advises that when exporting leather, a farmer should be in line with a client's country. The standards that is required outside is a little bit high. 
and that is why we have to go green. Going green means avoiding the chemicals. We have some countries, especially in Europe, they have banned any leather that is tanned using a chrome. And if we are not careful, then we might lose such kind of market. So we have really to comply and we also have to go by what we call the speed of, of globalization. And I would rather urge that we, we adore what we call the blue growth. The economy that is derived from the water bodies. This is the only line that is now still lying fallow. It has not been tapped. There is a lot from the water bodies that, has not, that have not been tapped very well. And they can support us in our business and running the economy of this country. High worker turnover is one of the challenges that Newton faces. This is because his tannery is among the best in Western Kenya. He shares that this slows down the business because he has to train his workers again. He hopes that any new trainee that will come in will take the mantle to start their own tannery to meet the high export market demand and make a bigger profit instead of being poached. I've faced a number of challenges. One big one is actually getting the qualified personnel or people to help me work here. Leather chemistry is not one of the programs that are offered, that is offered in most of our local institutions. They offer the leather science and the leather technology, which in my view is very shallow and cannot enable one really to do the tanning. So in most cases, it forces me actually to get these students here, train them again. You, you I just start from zero up to the end part of it. Then I absorb them. Unfortunately, there is always what we call the immigration. Wherever you train them, after some few days, they are poached. They move to other places where they are uh, what we call the green patches, which to me is not very bad. Only that all the time I remain without a qualified staff. Over the decades, Newton has seen numerous benefits. He has traveled across many countries and has been able to expand his business globally. Well, the benefits are so many. We've so far managed to improve our production bit by bit. And now where we are, we are actually shipping close to eight tons after every two months to Europe. We've also managed to secure, to secure the market in the US that we are taking our fish leather. Those are the benefits. We are growing. We are absorbing more students. My prayer is we need to train more. And this can only be achieved if we work closely with the county governments so that they bring, they can sponsor uh, the youths to come and acquire this knowledge here. Right? And then, you know, when they get out, they start their own production units. That is the way to go. And that's when they can also employ others. Not that you remain someone who is ever on transit looking for jobs. My personal life is nice. You see, I'm not doing bad. I'm able to put some food on the table. I don't, I'm not suffering. Yeah, I take very good meals in the morning, <laughs> lunch, and supper. My students, my, my, my children are also pursuing good education. Yeah, I'm not living below uh, poverty line. Yeah, I'm moderate. But that is through this business. Newton has also won many awards. Currently, he holds the title of the best scientific innovator in Kenya. Won several uh, scientific innovation awards. One of them, currently I'm the one holding uh, uh, the, the best award in uh, innovation, we call it the Innovation Award 2015. Uh, nobody has ever snatched it away from me. I've also won the best uh, African Innovation Award. Currently, I'm among the best 30 in Africa that was identified by the Quas uh, Institution in New York. 
for the best innovation in Africa. I think we are only three now in Ke no, we are two in Kenya. The rest are from uh, other African countries. But in general, we are 30. That is 2018. You go to Quasa uh, uh, 2018, you realize that I'm among the best 30 in the world in innovation. These awards, however, have prompted him to go deeper into his community to develop the people around him. This is why he trains these young people so well that they too will pull up their communities. Newton's vision is to create a hands-on leather school to train more people to get into the leather industry so that there are more job opportunities. The plans I have for this place is that you know, at one point I would want to run a school, a leather school that offers uh, leather chemistry to our youths. That's why we are already working closely with the National Industrial uh, Training Authority and uh, Kenya Technical Trainers College so that we develop what we call an occupational standard on leather. Now, together we are also joining hands with the Kenya Leather Development Council. They have been very much supportive in my business so that, you know, whatever we do, can also benefit the, the, the youths in future. Remember the youths are the majority, but them being the majority, they're the ones who are now idle outside. But if we really adopt systems that can really enable them to be absorbed into the job market, like what I'm talking about, we give them trainings and then we let them start something. As we wrap up today, remember opportunities are like sunrises. If you wait too long, you will miss them. Open your eyes, look within, and make sure you're satisfied with the life you are living. Loved the show? Share your feedback on our social media platforms at Farm Kenya and send us your questions on our SMS line at 22071.